Hello and welcome to another episode of D-Dubs Plays. Today we've got a tutorial on how to make the multi-platform end station look good and not have all of the lines merge into one. This was a request from Alex Plays a Game, who's a member on my Discord. He's also got a small YouTube channel and I will pop a link to that channel down in the description below. By the way, if you've got any suggestions of a tutorial you'd like to see, then please do drop a suggestion in the comments or join the Discord and give me a suggestion there. Now I think there are two parts to Alex's suggestion and the first part is how to deal with all of these lines. I think it can be a bit of a challenge having six lines and wondering what to do with all of them. And a uh, really easy way to just halve that problem is to treat them like three lines instead of six. So what I mean by that is you can run two lines parallel to each other and go off in three different directions instead of six. And then when you reach another piece of line like that, you can just bring one off in that direction, bring the other off in that direction and just join them up to the line facing in opposite directions. Something like that. So I think that's an easy way to make all of those lines seem a little less daunting. So let's create a little example of how that might work. Let's bring this first line out by about 18 and then we'll go out by 20. Now the distance between that node and that node is two units. So we're gonna add two on this first measurement. We're gonna go out by 20 and then we're going to go out 20 on that one as well. So that's nice and easy. That one curves off to the right. The next one, let's go out by, let's say, 20 on this one and then we're just going to give it a very slight curve just to make it a little bit more interesting than a perfectly straight line now if we come up to this end we go out just two units same gap that we've got down at the bottom there that makes it easier to place the node next to this one and we just come out until we find that guideline just there and We'll join that on so we've got another pair of parallel tracks going off in that direction then for this third one we can raise this up a little bit so what we'll do we'll go straight we'll go out by 10 units and let me just make sure I'm on my minimum elevation step there we go we'll go out by 10 units and we'll go up by one we want a nice smooth gradient for a rail line trains don't like steep slopes so we'll go out at a nice smooth gradient that a train can handle nice and easily just match that on this side so out by 10 up by 1 10 and 1 <laughs> there we go didn't want to do that last one and then we'll just curve this one off just as we did with that first one let's go out by 18 again it's a good measurement I think and then 20 And then as before, add two to the measurement, that one. Now, obviously these lines aren't going anywhere. They're just there for demonstration purposes, but hopefully this gives you some ideas about how you can deal with those lines and make them look a little bit more interesting. Now let's move on to the other part of this request, which I think is how we make this asset look good. Now a big asset like this needs a bit of space around it to give it that sense of importance, make it stand out a little. And we're going to start off by creating a bit of a more important looking entrance way out the front here. It doesn't need to be too big, something like this should be just about fine. And I'm going to start by putting a bit of a path at the front here. I'm actually going to use the plazas and promenades, but if you don't have that, you can uh, create a two wide path with this little trick here. So if you start one above the bottom on one side, um, now it hasn't actually connected to the bottom on that side, but if that happens, just try it on the other side. So there we go. As you can see, it's connected to the bottom on that side. Then on this side, we're just gonna go all the way from the bottom and you've got a nice little two wide path. You will get that little gap in the middle. You can actually put maybe a little tree or a hedge um, in that gap. Uh, let me just, give you a quick example so uh, yeah as you can see there is a little spot there where we can put some 
detailing in. So there are ways to uh, pretty that up a little bit. But as I said, I'm going to use the plazas and promenades paths. So I'm going to pop this one here in. That looks lovely. I'm also going to use a couple of the props from the plazas and promenades. Again, if you haven't got this DLC, there are plenty of other options. You can use some of the statues, for example, if you've got the um, Park Life DLC, there's the flower beds. I'm going to use these fountains and I'm going to just turn them around so that these uh, archy bits are facing each other. There we go. Another nice simple detail that I like to use is just these little rows of hedges or sometimes you'll see me use little rows of rocks instead but this is a nice simple way to create a border around an area. So something like this creates a lovely little entryway. You've got that bit of empty space in the middle that draws the eye in there. The detailings are not too tall so they don't block the view of the uh, building. And as I say, you don't need to copy my design exactly. You can choose the props and trees that you want, make the design your own, but just find your own way to extend the entryway and uh, give it that little touch of awesome source. Now if we look at the sides of the asset here we can see that there's a little bit of parking there but that doesn't feel like it's nearly enough parking for a station of this size. So we're going to again create a bit of space uh, along the sides of the asset here. And we're going to add some of the new parking lots that uh, came with the update now that the uh, hot fix is out and we can actually use them. <laughs> I'm going to pull the road out to about there. And I believe we need nine. Let's go, let's go 11. So the new parking lots are in the props menu and we can use one of the larger ones and one of the smaller ones here. Lovely job. And then we'll bring these roads down to meet these roads here. And now we just need to find something to do with these spaces here. So I think we definitely need a footpath leading from the parking lot to the main entrance. I'm going to use the university footpath. I'm just going to go all the way from the edge here and then all the way down to there. I might need to come from this end. There we go. Now we could put like a nice little row of shops or something along here. A bit of low density commercial is definitely an option, but I think I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to line the road with some trees. Let's use these ones here. Then I'm going to use some of the tiles from the Park Life DLC. Just going to try and get those lined up as well as I can with the path. And I'm just going to create a custom plaza area. I think that's probably big enough. And I'm going to use a selection of stalls and stands. We've got some in the Park Life DLC, some in the plazas and promenades. I'm going to create a nice little selection.
So there we go, we've got a few stools at the back. I've put some lamp posts in, some bins, a few benches around the sides and some tables in the middle. And it's created a nice cozy plaza area where people can sit, have something to eat and uh, maybe buy a newspaper or an ice cream. And again, this is something where you can choose the assets that suit your tastes and something that you can make your own. It's nothing overly complicated there. It's a fairly simple thing to do, but it has a really nice effect. Now last up, we're going to just finish off this area with some flower beds, some trees, some shrubs. Just fill out that last bit of green space nicely. And there we go, we've just filled out that empty green space a little bit and I think we can call that good. So we've got this nice welcoming entryway. We've got the nice plazas at the sides here, a bit of uh, interesting green space and then plenty of parking for the customers. And of course up at the top here we've got some ideas about how to deal with all of those rail lines. Hopefully that's given you some good ideas about how you can use this asset and uh, make it your own. And as I said earlier, if you've got any suggestions about tutorials that you'd like to see, then please do let me know down in the comments or join the Discord and let me know over there. Don't forget to smash that like button, although I accept no liability for cracked screens or broken mouse buttons. And uh, if you're not already subscribed, then consider clicking the subscribe button too. Next week you can join me for another Let's Play episode in Sandy Shores, and I will catch you in the next one.